Hello and welcome to another video. It's time to do an agility and maneuverability check on the new carbon fiber exoskeleton for the next and final prototype of power armor that I'll be making in the series. We're going to jump straight into that test and then afterwards I'll do a little bit of a review going over the things that I need to change and what's happening moving forward. One thing to note here is this is literally the first time I've actually had the full thing on and moved around in it outside of my kitchen. So this is also kind of a first impression for me. With that being said, please like and subscribe and it's time to change location. And we have also changed attire. The reason for the desert camouflage is that I need something that contrasts with the carbon fiber exoskeleton as any other color basically blends in unless it's white or a yellowy color. Now, I didn't want to buy a white Chavs tracksuit purely for this video and a friend had some desert DPMs that I could borrow. So I went for these instead. So it's time to put it on as a suit. So we'll be putting on the legs first and then onto the torso afterwards and we'll see how long it takes. While I'm putting the exoskeleton on, I'll go over some points to note. Number one being that the vast majority, pretty much all of this is now carbon fiber and the things that aren't carbon fiber are actually carbon fiber PLA filament with the odd little bit of metal where it was needed. Thus making this exoskeleton very light, unfortunately my weighing scales died so I wasn't able to find out exactly how much they weigh, but I estimate they weigh about five kilos. Two kilos of that is probably in the boots, which you'll understand why later on. There's probably a kilo in the spine due to the use of metal there, and probably a half a kilo in the bearings for the mock-up actuators, leaving approximately 1.5 kilos for the carbon fiber itself. The exoskeleton is in three pieces to make it easier to put on and easier to transport, so put the legs on first and then go and put the top half on. And now the legs are on, it's time to put the top half on. Now, the legs are derived from some knee braces that I made quite a while ago, so I've well got uh, the hang of getting those on. However, as you can see here, the top half, I've not got the hang of this yet. So however long this takes, I'm sure I'll be able to get this down as time goes on. But the process for putting the top half on is to put the belt on first, as you can see, and then put your arms into the sleeves and then attach these straps onto the upper arms that then hold the arms in nicely. The total time on this attempt was about seven minutes to get it on, but I am confident once I get used to it, I'll be able to get that down to about two minutes. And that is the skeleton fully on. So we'll zoom out and take a look. And as far as I can tell, it is contrasting nicely. So we've got the legs, you can see them pretty good with the Desert DPMs. I've got good movement for stepping up and good movement for stepping down. You've got pretty good movement all around in the directions you need to do. You've also got movement and twist in the ankles, almost correctly. And you've even got some Achilles heel assistance with some elastic on the ankles. And as for the arms, we do have one of the armor casing covers still on this from a previous video, but you can see I've got a nice sleeve over this side of carbon fiber to make sure you can actually hold it onto your arms, but you can still twist your hands around. These mock-up actuators that I've fitted for the time being do appear to actually be lining up well with the joints. And I've got good movement round that way. And then if we rotate onto the back, you can see the full skeleton and the maneuverability it has going up and round and down and in pretty much all directions that you'd require. Nothing's jabbing me in the back, which is pretty good. The only thing that is perhaps missing that I haven't put on from this point is that ideally it could do with two kind of cross straps over the chest attaching to the back plate to make sure it stays where it needs to do. However, the end design will have armor plate on that basically functions as that, so that's why I haven't bothered. As for maneuverability, it's a question of what I can actually find to use. So let's see if I can climb this at least. I do feel like I need to note at this point after ACL tears and flat feet. To be honest, I'm not much more agile than this out of an exoskeleton. So embarrassingly, it didn't really slow me down that much. So that wasn't too bad once I worked out how to actually climb up it. Got to get down now though. I do wish I prepped a little bit more to do this so I could look a bit better getting up it, but at least you know I'm not AI doing this because it would have done a better job. <coughs> oh. Perhaps a bit of a balance check. My steadiness here isn't actually down to balance, it's down to the fact that I wasn't really sure how well these treads were going to actually grip this log and if I were going to deck it that way instead. But they were actually all right, it's just that they're very hard so they don't form round things quite like a regular boot would do. Why step onto a bag of logs, I hear you ask? 
Well, I actually wanted to see how stable the ankles feel on bags of logs because you're just walking on something completely unstable, as you can see in the ankles. So I wanted to see what it felt like, and it didn't feel too bad, to be honest. Because this project has always been about making an actual, functionable, usable suit of power armor, one of the things that I wanted to be able to do is actually be able to drive a vehicle while wearing the suit. The biggest part about that is actually getting the boots to fit onto pedals and actually be able to use them. So I thought I'd go with a fork truck as the first test. As one, it's hard to damage because it's very industrial, but two, it is actually quite tight. So if I can get everything in place and use it, it's a good show for the future. Apart from harshness of braking, it's not bad. I am confident I could dismount this chariot way faster. However, if I deck it, I'm confident that the 3D printed mock-up actuators will break. Something with these boots, because they are massive, something to remember is that these are the correct size for when it's fully armored. So they won't look quite as ridiculous when all the rest of the armor on. Having said that, they are still pretty big. However, if we're coming close, we can see how I can actually press the pedals. No, I do apologize. This is very hard to film. So you can just about see the pedals and you can see how I can go accelerator and then can switch over to brake. That foot just fit on there as well. Don't get me wrong, it is tight. Fork trucks aren't exactly meant for this. But the idea of being able to use vehicles while wearing the suit is coming to fruition. And now I've had some minor outdoor activities. It's time to go up to the gym, which is a work gym, thankfully, and do some actual movements. Now time for these dreaded steps, these are gridded steel steps on, on the previous prototype. It felt like a death sentence trying to go up and down them. And thankfully it was way better than the old prototype. Both going up and coming down, I didn't feel like I was gonna trip and break my neck. So what was happening last time with the old prototype was that the treads were basically too big and too wide. So when you stepped on the grids, you basically stuck into them. Whereas with these, you can see how they don't stick, but you do have plenty of grip still. So these are far improved. I figure that we may as well start with pull-ups. In editing this, I have realized that my shoulders don't look equal here. And I think the problem is on one side, I've got elastic from a previous video and one I haven't. So that's why it's not quite equal. Not too bad, although the strap was nipping a little bit here. So I do need to change that, but it doesn't help. I don't have any padding on this Velcro yet. Time for some little deadlifts. These did feel all right and nothing was clashing. However, it is worth noting that the boots give you about a two and a half inch lift. So I couldn't bend down quite as far as I would normally. Then time for a little overhead dumbbell press. Now nothing was catching. However, I didn't really warm up and I think I overcooked it on the size of the dumbbell I picked. Press ups was all good as well. My main concern on why I wanted to do press ups was just to make sure none of the elbow joints were actually nipping the forearm skin as you go down and go up. But I've spaced it out correctly on the actuators, so time for some leg mobility. Sometimes I feel like the hip position doesn't look right, but every time I moved around and it felt great, it never felt like it was getting stuck or incorrectly lined up. Although, yeah, the boots are pretty loud. Time for some burpees, and you won't be surprised to note that I couldn't be bothered to do many of these. <sighs> and lastly, I thought I'd just do a little bit of pull down so you can see the full rotation of the arms. And then on the way out, you can see going down the stairs how the ankle pieces don't clash with the stairs themselves which is an issue I had on the old prototype. Something that regular viewers will know is I'm always keen to make sure this will fit through doorways and this being a kind of standard industrial interior doorway, you can see that I've got plenty of room here. So as long as the armor doesn't really extend further out than the actuators, I should be all right for actually getting through doorways. It's not much different to normal, which is a good success. Now, believe it or not, I actually almost forgot to actually try break into a jog, do a bit of a run. So it's getting dark, but We'll have a go. Well, it doesn't feel terrible, but you can tell the boots are massive and they do still feel slightly loose, even though they actually are quite a tight fit. So that's something we'll be looking at in a moment. With that said, time to go back to the studio. 
And we are back in the kitchen because frankly, this is the best place I've got for lighting. And as the last clip in there was of me running, you can see how the boots are pretty big. We're gonna start there and go over and review them first. Overall, when it comes to the boots, I'm very pleased with them really. They were a million times better than the boots on the old prototype. And crucially, it didn't feel like a death sentence trying to get up and down steps. They are a little bit hard to work out of what I can improve and what I can't because these boots are the full size that they'll be when all of the armor is actually mounted to the suit. So while they look oversized now, they're probably not in the future. But as you could hear, these soles were very loud and they clapped against the floor. So in the future, I do need to try and do something with that and try and reduce that sound. As for how they actually fit, in general, they fit really well. And I can't actually make these much smaller as you'll be able to see. With the toe cap open and the boot inserted, you can see there's really not much space around the sides. Perhaps they're a little bit longer than they need to be, but it really isn't much. We're talking about 10 millimeters front and back. These top covers work really well to hold the front of the toe down. You can see we've got some foam in there. And when you fold it over and attach it down, it holds the front of the boot down. The thing that I realized when I was trying to run was you are getting lift in the heel. It's only like 10 millimeters, but that's stopping you physically from running as good as you could do. So I am thinking I'm gonna to have to do something with this, whether I try to put a strap over the ankle plate here, or if I actually, which I think this might be a better idea, put a magnet into the bottom of the heel of the boot and then a steel plate into the bottom of the boot of this. That way they essentially act as mag boots and they help to keep the heel down in the boot, which should improve your ability to run. But I'm not 100% sure about that because I did want to be able to just use regular boots with this and not have to have any custom footwear. The ankle mobility overall was great. It all moved really well. Something that was pointed out by someone in the comments on the previous video is that this bracket here could really do with being curved and more matching onto the angle of this lower bracket so you have less of a spacer because then that reduces the chance of the axle bending in a motion like that. And he's entirely correct. It's not something I could do at the time because I didn't know exactly where this curve needed to be and at what angle it needed to be to make sure it didn't clash with anything, but that's something I'll be able to sort out soon. And then moving up to the legs, these felt great in general. The only problem I did have with them is I haven't lined them out in foam yet. Regular viewers will know that I am replacing these soon as the finish is frankly appalling. These were made out of 3D printed molds that didn't quite go to plan. I've only done a couple of 3D printed molds before. Normally in the past, I've made carbon fiber with handmade molds, which have typically come out way better. This being a piece that fits onto the knee braces I made quite a while ago. You can see it's got a good shine and it's actually of decent quality, much better quality than what I've got here. So that is the quality that's to be expected in the future. And now onto the hips, which hopefully you can just about see it here. Now the eagle eyed viewers may have realized that there was something missing towards the end of that video. And it was one of the hip pieces, which I have here. Now the thing is these were something that I couldn't properly finish fully in carbon fiber and really make strong because I wasn't sure if the curve was gonna be correct and I wasn't sure if the holes down the tubes were gonna be correct or they were even gonna be wide enough. Turns out they were nearly perfect and overall they fit very well, felt pretty good. All of the alignment really felt good as well like it was all in the correct place. The only thing that happened apart from this breaking off as expected was that I found out that this rod that sits into this tube on the end. Wasn't quite long enough really. I think this needs to be out of another three or four inches long. There were certain positions where my leg would be at such an angle where this wasn't long enough and it would pop out of this tube. Which if you haven't seen the hip and pelvis video, the way this attaches is literally, it just slots into that as you put on the different parts of the suit. This then allows twist backwards and forwards and movement in and out. Again, worked excellently, it's just this really needs to be a few inches longer and the hole in this tube needs to be a bit further down. But overall, very pleased. Onto the spine area and back in general, all of it worked pretty well. There was one thing that took me a while to work out what was actually going on. And basically the hips were sagging, so the hips are meant to basically hold a 90 degree angle compared to my spine. You might have noticed in that video, they were kind of sagging back a little bit. I couldn't work out what it was exactly. But then as I was looking in the gym mirror, I realized that as I was bending over, I wasn't really bending my back at all. I was just bending at the hips, which meant that all of the movement that exists in the spine for actually arching your back over was just causing the hips to sag and causing the lower part of the spine to sag. 
and there was a basically no plus whatsoever as I wasn't actually arching my back when I was bending over. So while the twist side to side was great and the leaning over was also great, the arching of the back back and forwards was actually making things worse. So I'm gonna make a bracket 3D print to start with and I'll make it out of something else later that basically takes the leaning motion out of this bracket but still allows you to rotate side to side and lean over left and right. As for the arms, they work great in general. Not much to be improved on really, apart from actually putting some padding on the strapping. I'm gonna remake these little aluminium hook brackets which are for the strapping. I actually don't think they need to be made out of aluminium. I think if I beef them up a little bit and just make them out of PETG and 3D print them, they'll be better. I also want a little bit of a spacer off of the carbon fiber anyway to make it easier to actually put the straps on, which is much easier to do when you're doing a 3D print. The hinges, while looking primitive, all work great. Could do with getting some perhaps nicer looking hinges. Other than that, they did actually function very well, as I hope you could see. The sleeve with a Velcro strap also worked really well for securing onto the forearm while still allowing you to rotate your wrist around. So that worked great as well. So what's next? Well, really it is to attach the armor casings that have been featured in previous videos and see what the mobility is like when the armor casings on. These are just blank armor casings, not loaded with a composite armor yet, which if we scoot onto the left arm, we'll be able to see. This is the forearm armor casing with the fist extension from a previous video. The fist extension is gonna be made out of carbon fiber, but you can see how the armor casing will fit on. We've got an upper forearm piece that I've printed out here, so you can roughly see how that fits as well. You can see how this will reduce mobility a little bit, so I just need to check and make sure that they're not clashing too much, which I don't think they will. I also need to do this to see if I can shrink down any of the pieces like this shin piece. As you can see, it's quite big. I actually think it is about the right size, but if I can just take off 15 millimeters from the center and narrow it up a bit, that'll be a massive weight saving and make it much easier to maneuver in. I'll be printing the rest of these pieces out over the next week or two. And then it'll be time to do some armor testing. I'll also be working on my own actuators in the background still. Which hopefully I'll have a video for soon. So there may be a couple of weeks delay on videos on this project. However, I am also planning on making a robot and a robot hand should be next week's video. So I think that just about covers everything. So thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you on the next video. And last of all, have a great week.